So uh, it was the first week, freshman year of college, uh, and my roommate and I didn't have much in common. Um, he was a, an Indian kid from uh, southeast Iowa, and I was obviously a white person um, from uh, Manhattan. But we did have one common goal that we both shared fervently, um, and that was to lose our virginity by the end of freshman year. Now, I didn't have any reason to think that this would possibly happen. Um, <laughs> high school was clearly not a very fertile time for me. Um, I had gotten up the shirt uh, after prom once, um, and I was generally deemed, you took a poll of all the girls in high school, they would say, Graham is one of the funniest, nicest friends I've ever had. <laughs> but uh, I was at Vassar College, a former all-women's institution. <laughs> where the ratio was 60, 40, women to men, and there was a great bunch of gay guys, too. <laughs> My roommate and I were confident we were gonna be like swimming in pussy. That was just the, that was what we envisioned, right? Um, we were so confident of this that we were concerned that what if one of us was helping some nice girl see Jesus when another one brought another girl back and also wanted to do the same, right? How would we make sure that there wasn't some sort of crossing of the streams? Now this uh, was in uh, 1995, uh, this is before cell phones, um, so we couldn't text each other. We did, however, have cutting edge technology called uh, a whiteboard. <laughs> and so we decided we would leave a code word on the door so that we would know, right? So my roommate's like, we'll write tippy toe on the door. <laughs> and I was like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of, right? Like, it'll be obvious what we're doing if we write tippy toe on the door. I'm like, we're gonna say Lou called. I'm like, do you know Lou? He's like, I don't know a Lou. I'm like, I don't know a Lou. We'll say Lou called. Got it? Got it. Okay. Fast forward about a month and a half, uh, and um, I, was, I did not need a snorkel. I was, there was not as much uh, swimming as I thought there was gonna be. Um, <laughs> but it did turn out that um, uh, funny, uh, nice guys were somehow in in college, whereas like six months ago they were not. Um, so this is good. I was, you know, meeting women and flirting a bit. Uh, and there was one particular uh, young lady named Sarah who was in my introduction to American politics class. Uh, and uh, we were sort of hitting it off and seeing her at parties and sort of flirting a bit. And so, um, so I thought I'd take the next step. Now the next step in college uh, was to invite someone to your room. Uh, that, was, that was where the magic happened. Uh, and so I said uh, to Sarah at, at class um, one Friday, I was like, hey, uh, I don't have class after this. I think I know you do. Um, but afterwards, do you want to come over and uh, see my room? Uh, it's got a great view. And it did. It legit had a great view of the quad. And she's like, sure. And I was like, all right. Uh, so I go back to my room to begin the process, right? There was a three-step process I had when women came over freshman year. I swear to God. First step, I would put on the Braveheart soundtrack. <laughs> Second step, I would turn the halogen lamp to setting two. <laughs> and the third step, I would put on mesh shorts. I know, I, I know, I'm an idiot. I had no idea why I put on mesh shorts. So I'm there, ready and the knock comes at the door. And I open it with, I'm sure, what was a raging boner <laughs> and like strains of bagpipes coming through the door. <laughs> I'm like, oh, hello. And she came into the room, uh, which I realize is not necessarily a statement about my sexiness and more of the terrible life that straight women had at Vassar College, right? It was just, it's like, ugh, all right, fine. Um, so, now we're in there, right? And we're getting, getting it on, right? The mesh shorts have come off. Her top is off, and we're like getting, we're doing things, right? We're really, I don't know what I'm doing. Sarah McLaughlin, her third album was uh, called Fumbling Towards Ecstasy, and that's exactly what I was doing. Uh, also, pro tip, if anyone's a virgin, uh, Sarah McLaughlin, way better hookup music than the Braveheart soundtrack. Um, uh, you live and you learn. So. Uh, so we're getting it on, right? And I'm like sort of like going through all, we're getting things, seeing things, great, we're getting ready. I'm at the precipice, like literally at the precipice, and I hear the elevator. Um, 
In the elevator, it's an older building, and the elevator made a lot of noise, and the elevator stops on our floor. And I'm like, okay, like, pay, don't worry, pay attention. Like, you're in your happy place. This is gonna happen. This is like the moment you've dreamed of. Um, and I hear footsteps as I'm sort of listening with one ear, uh, as I'm fumbling, and, uh, and I hear my roommate say, oh, Lou called, and the door just swings open. <laughs> and she screams, and I'm just staring at him, and I'm like, bro, and he's like, oh, oh, sorry, so he closed the door. And I'm like, what, what do we say? What, what, was the, what was the code word? What was the, he's like, Lou, and through the door, he's yelling, Lou called. I'm like, right, and what did I write on the board like 700 times? Because I did, I'd written like, Lou called, call Lou back, it's an emergency. Lou called again, <laughs> definitely call Lou. I mean, Lou called was all over this goddamn board, right? All over the board. I was like, what is on that board? He's like, Lou called. He's like, but bro, he's like, I met a guy named Lou at the library like an hour ago. And I was like, what are the chances that on the day that I'm to lose my virginity, you meet a guy named Lou at the library, right? And I'm like, he's like, you know, it's weird, looking to the door, it's weird because uh, I didn't give him my number, but I'm like, how you didn't give him the number? How the fuck would he call if you didn't have a number? And at this point I noticed that uh, Sarah is dressed uh, and uh, you know, women can get dressed real fast when they're mad. Uh, and so uh, she, she's dressed at the door, uh, and she opens it. Uh, my roommate is standing there. I'm covering myself with my mesh shorts. Um, and she's like, uh, I don't want to talk to you again. And I was like, that's, that's fair, right? And then she closes the door, and I'm like, you, you have taken away the only thing I've ever wanted. That was it. I was going to climb the mountaintop. I was, I was going to, he's like, I'm sorry. I didn't know. It's, it's all my fault, right? And as the more drums and bagpipes. And so I just... I can't help, right? Like, I'm like, at this point, I'm just sort of dying laughing because this is like the craziest thing that's ever happened. And so, you know, he came into the room. Um, and uh, so uh, I did end up uh, losing my virginity uh, that year, December 13th, uh, 1995. <laughs> yep, thank you. Thank you. It was, it was terrible. Uh, it's really unfortunate. I'm very sorry for her. Uh, <laughs> And then later in like April, I'm coming back to my room. Um, and as I get to the door, I see, oh, by the way, we went back to tippy toe, cause fuck that, right? Like I, I couldn't take a chance that this would ever happen again, right? So I come back, I come back to the room and I see tippy toe written on the door. And uh, so I like start smiling and I get it real loud. I'm like, tippy toe? You know, I just met a guy named tippy toe at the library yesterday. Thanks so much everybody, that's the story.